So Peppy and I sat down to talk about what's new in Laser. If you're short on time, here's all those changes condensed to half a second. Great, and now we'll cover those changes one by one, starting with a step back in quality and perfection without adding any value, according to Peppy, 13 years ago, about this. It's a pretty simple implementation. It tries its best to fit to the curve you're drawing, but depending on how fast you draw and how smoothly you draw, it can potentially give you a bit of an ugly looking curve that is modifiable after placement. So you can just go in and adjust the control points as you usually would with the slider. I'm also a bit scared. I think everyone is a bit scared as to what this is going to be used for because it's uh, powerful, but also uh, with power comes abuse and silliness. This also comes with a couple settings. Control point spacing, which affects how far apart each anchor is. And corner threshold, which affects how easily sharp corners are formed. Oli Bombi is working on an alternative algorithm for that drawing, which does a better job at matching what you're trying to draw. But after you finish placement, it's not easy to edit because some control points could be completely off screen. I, I think he said it can be tweaked to not be like that. But yeah, I I'm not sure yet. I think this feature has the most benefit to new mappers. Experienced mappers went through the trouble of learning, for example, that this configuration of anchors creates a wave slider, but for the next generation of mappers who are probably using their mom's iPads, they can just click and drag a wave shape to get a similar result. More accessibility to mapping is something OS desperately needs, and Laser is making it happen. Obviously, we're still trying to do this leaderboard thing by the end of December, and we're kind of running out of tasks remaining on the project. So I am branching out a bit to look at some of the remaining UI UX issues that we can improve to make the first experience people have with laser the best we can. And skinning is where this initiative starts. The skin editor completely changes how people interact with skins in Osu, and it's only going to be more valuable as more stuff is added. It's a very flexible system, but it was very hard to find. Like, you had to know to go into the options, find the skin section, and then click the skin layout editor. So now if you click the edit button on the main menu, there will be two editors, the beatmap editor and the skin editor. It seems pretty useful, especially if you want to test out the skin editor changes from today's update. First, you can now disable these little labels for combo and accuracy. You can also use player-related components on the song select screen. And reaching the end of gameplay will now loop back to the beginning. Before this, it would just go to the results screen and not save your changes, which people unsurprisingly found super annoying. Are there any plans for the new uh, Argon font? A lot of people mentioned it, so I'm, I'm just wondering. Yeah, Flight has actually made three new variants of the fonts, but they're not in for this release, so maybe next release. Swapping over from UX to game balance, this update also improved one of the last major problems people had with Laser, HP Drain. We had a completely different implementation in Laser, which was a, a lot more simplified. The thinking was that if we could keep it simple and still get the drain rate to roughly match the expectations of the community, then that would be a good direction. But Smoogie tried that and it turned out to not be feasible. So we've just brought across the exact implementation from Stable. Speaking of things matching stable, this animation on slider ticks now matches stable. And maps with color hacks, aka manually adjusting the combo color rotation, now actually work like stable. Previously, some spinners would make colors go out of order for complex reasons that aren't worth talking about. What is the official word for color hacks? Like, I assume that's just a word the community made up. No, no, that, that, I think that was me. It was something like, someone asked for this, I'm like, that sounds so wrong, but okay, you can have it. The internal variable was always co color hacks. So, okay, at the end of this path to ranked play, it's looking like a lot of things are being copied from stable, but not everything can be fixed that way. CVUR stands for Converted Unstable Rate. Unstable rate is some complicated math thing that shows how consistent your clicking is, and it's converted because stable is dumb. Unstable rate until now has not really been useful when comparing a play in double time or half time because it doesn't adjust to factor out the rate adjust. Laser was also dumb until Poyo made the game calculate UR based purely on milliseconds between clicks. So now you can use double time with custom rates or wind up or even adaptive speed and the game will show an actually useful unstable rate. Spectating is, I guess, part of O's culture. Until now, spectating in Laser kind of sucked though. A player quitting would leave the spectator watching this nonsense which is now fixed, and a player failing would do kind of the same thing. That's fixed too. 
So with the uh, path to rank play nearly done, are you going to like cram a lot into the last couple of updates or? I don't think so. I think it's going to be quite empty. Most of the remaining changes are going to be stuff which doesn't really impact the user. One of the ongoing things I've been doing is working through infrastructure deployments, getting all the pieces up to date. Things like total score increase, PP calculations. I've been streaming less. It's very hard to stream some of the stuff I'm working on when it comes to working with servers and trying not to show anything I shouldn't be showing to the world. Very subtle way of saying anti-cheat. Well, yeah, I haven't I haven't quite got to the anti-cheat part yet. <laughs> That's like next on my list.